Now I think one of Old School RuneScape's biggest strengths is the sense of freedom that it provides. There are very little restrictions for the game. You can do pretty much whatever you want at any time. You can train pretty much any skill anytime. You can do quests in pretty well any order that you want. And overall, there is very little guidance. That's one of its biggest strengths, but it can also be very daunting for new players because there is no direction. So because yesterday we had the launch of Group Iron Man and there's a lot of new accounts being made right now, I thought today would be a great time to cover some goals that you can set yourself for the mid game. I hope you guys enjoy. As always, if you do find this useful, always appreciate a like in the video. It helps out a ton. Thanks for watching and let's get started. All right, so the first goal I want to talk about here is the Ash Sanctifier. It's a fairly new item that was added in just in 2021, but it's probably one of my favorite additions in the last couple of years. It's an incredibly strong item that will automatically sanctify any ashes that are dropped into the ground. Now, ashes are very similar to bones and they will give you prayer experience when they are buried or sanctified, uh, which means the earlier that you get this, the more passive prayer experience you'll be able to build up, which I think is very powerful. It's very similar to the bone crusher and I would also recommend getting that as well. Now, to obtain the Ash Sanctifier, you have to do the Korand and Kebos Hard Diary. This will actually be fairly challenging because there are quite a few requirements for it. However, once you're done, you will have completed most of the Korand Favor system, which is really good to get out of the way. And you'll have a decent set of skills leveled up, including mining, slayer, smithing, woodcutting, magic, thieving, and farming. Uh, so by unlocking the Ash Sanctifier, you'll have one of the most cost-effective ways to train prayer and a bunch of other useful stats along the way. Now, one of the most important things to unlock in the early game is transportation. And by far the most universal transportation method is the fairy ring system. And you'll want to get that unlocked as soon as possible. Fairy rings are unlocked by starting Fairy Tales Part 2, uh, which means realistically you only need the stats and requirements to complete Fairy Tales Part 1, which are fairly easy to obtain. Now, on top of unlocking the fairy rings, it's also very important to unlock a teleport that is close to a fairy ring to make them more useful. If you're a main account, this is very simple, especially in the early game, you can simply buy Salve Graveyard Teleport Tablets on the Grand Exchange, and these teleport you very close to a fairy ring, and you can buy these right away. Alternatively, if you are an Ironman or want to save a bit of money, you can go ahead and get Necklaces of Passage, and you can use these to teleport to the Wizard Tower and run south. Both of these are good options, and very easy to obtain in the early and mid game. Now next up here we have Proselyte Armor. Now Proselyte Armor offers one of the strongest prayer bonuses of any armor set in the entire game. It's very cost effective, but you do need to unlock it by completing some quests. Essentially you have to complete the Slug Menace storyline, but it is more than worth it. Proselyte Armor is incredibly useful when training your combats, and I find you end up using it a lot more than you think, and it costs almost nothing. If you're doing Slayer tasks that require you to pray, Proselyte is going to be one of the best options, and again, it's one of those things that is good to get early, because over time it will save you a ton of money on prayer potions. Now by far, one of the skills that will give you the most return on your investment in the early to mid game is Construction. Specifically, if you can get to 50 construction, that will make your life so much easier. As to why 50 construction, well at 50 you unlock the portal chamber, which allows you to add in portals to different locations in your house. Now not only is this convenient because you can just have one teleport in your inventory, a teleport to your house, and then you can just choose where you want to go from your house. It's also incredibly useful because you can build portal chambers to areas that normally would require you to change spellbooks for. 50 Construction also unlocks the Mounted Glory, which, which essentially means you can have an unlimited glory in your house, assuming you can get there. Overall, 50 Construction, super helpful, worth the investment, even though it is fairly expensive, and overall will just save you a ton of time. Now, we can't talk about saving time without talking about the Graceful set. Obtaining full Graceful is a really common early to mid game goal, but it's common for a reason. The Graceful set is just so universally useful that most players will shoot to get it as soon as possible. Now Graceful Armor will not only reduce the weight of your entire inventory, if you have the full set it will reduce it by 25 kilos. It will also give you a 30% increased run energy restoration rate which combined is incredibly helpful. There is a reason why I see people running around with this on all the time if you're doing a quest, Graceful, if you're doing skilling, Graceful. Uh, sometimes if you're lazy and just trying to kill a quest boss, graceful. It truly is just one of those key items that you want to unlock as soon as possible. Now, one mid-game goal that I always recommend to people is to try to unlock the Farming Guild. I personally think the Farming Guild is one of the best guilds in Old School RuneScape. 
Now it can be unlocked at 45 farming and 60% Hosidia's house favor. That will get you into the beginner tier of the farming guild. However, to get into the other tiers, you'll need 65 farming and then eventually 85 farming. Uh, but even the first tier is useful mainly because of something called farming contracts. This is a great way to start training your farming while also making a bit of money on the side. The earlier you can get started with this, the better. Once you get access to the second tier of the guild, you can also start killing probably one of the easier mid-game bosses, that being Hespori. Uh, when you kill Hespori, you will get some farming experience as well as an item drop. Uh, a fairly easy and fun boss to at least get a bit of experience with bossing an old school runescape. Uh, the farming guild is by far the most fleshed out, and I think offers some of the best rewards out of any guild in the game. So if you're going to go for one, you should probably go for the farming guild. So Barrow's Gloves are the quintessential mid-game goal in my opinion. If you asked anyone what a popular mid-game goal is, pretty much everyone would say Barrow's Gloves, and there's a reason for that. They will be your best in slot glove item for pretty much the entire game. There's only a few items better than it. So they're incredibly powerful on their own, but it also forces you to complete a large variety of mid-game quests, which in the end requires you to have at least 175 quest points, uh, which gives you a great structure to go through the majority of mid-game quests. And of course, all of the quests you complete do have skill requirements, which means by the end of it, you will have a very well fleshed out and well balanced mid-game account. Now another fun goal to go for, uh, for early to mid game accounts, is to try to get a skilling outfit. Now no, not all of these are strictly efficient to obtain, but they can really help break up the monotony of training. Now skilling outfits will generally give a very small experience boost to the skill that the outfit corresponds to. For example, when you have the full angler outfit, you'll get an additional 2.5% fishing experience whenever you're fishing. If you get the prospector outfit, you're gonna get an additional 2.5% mining experience. You get the idea. Now when I say that some of these are not strictly efficient to obtain, I mean that the time it takes you to obtain the skilling outfit is less overall experience than if you just train the skill without it. Unless of course you're going for 200 mil experience, in which case you probably want the outfit. Now probably one of the most obvious mid-game goal is the achievement diary. That's essentially what it was made for, to give structure and direction for accounts. And I think a really strong goal to go for is to complete all of the medium achievement diaries. The achievement diaries have a large variety of different skill and quest requirements, uh, but most of them are fairly quick to obtain on their own, although completing all of the diaries will take quite some time. There are a whole host of useful rewards from it, uh, mainly focusing on very useful teleports, but there are so many other useful things with the diaries that there's too many to list. But one thing's for sure, by the time you complete all of the medium achievement diaries, you will have unlocked quite a lot, and you're definitely not going to regret it. So next up here we have the Defenders. The Dragon Defender is one of the most powerful upgrades you can get in the mid game and can be unlocked at roughly level 65 attack and strength or once you have access to the Warriors Guild. Pretty much as soon as you have the requirement to get the Dragon Defender, you should go ahead and get it. And there are not too many easily obtainable offhand items until the Defenders, obviously there are some. And not to mention it's a fairly strong place to train anyway, so it's definitely worth getting. Okay, so next up here, we can't have a mid-game list without talking about the Fire Cape. Now, once again, the Fire Cape is one of those classic mid-game goals, but it's there for a reason. The Fire Cape is one of the few items that offers a strength bonus in the cape slot, so it's really the only good option for melee training, so you want to get it as soon as possible. Now, to get the Fire Cape, you do need to defeat Jad. Now, there are not that many hard requirements to do this. Some people can do it at fairly low levels, and other players need to wait till they're higher level. Uh, but generally, once your combat stats get to the 70s is when you should think about doing it. It's very rewarding to complete, and I mean, you're going to be wearing this thing all the time when you're training melee combat. Uh, so once again, it is worth unlocking pretty much as soon as you can do it. <laughs> So the next really strong thing to work towards in the mid game is unlocking the piety prayer. Just on its own to get piety you need to have 70 defense and prayer which is already a fairly high requirement but also has some quest requirements as well. Piety is the strongest melee prayer in the entire game and compared to the ranged and magic alternative very cheap. You don't have to buy this you just unlock it by completing a quest. If you compare that to rigor for example rigor costs you 15 mil or whatever it is right now. Yes, that's quite a bit cheaper than it has been in the past, but still quite a bit more than nothing. Piety is useful in so many different locations. Training Slayer, if you have the money, bossing, you're gonna wanna use it all the time. Having Piety for higher level quests is also very useful. So definitely a good goal to work towards. So next up here, we have the Mage Arena quest line. 
Mage Arena 1 and Mage Arena 2 are very important quests to get done because they offer very strong magic gear. Mage Arena 1 offers the God Capes, which offer very strong magic attack and defense bonuses. The Mage Arena 2 quest will offer an imbued version of the cape, which will increase the attack and defense bonus, on top of adding in also a magic damage bonus. Now the Mage Arena 2 mini quest I think is a bit of a stretch for a mid game goal, but I think it is still doable. Really it just requires 75 magic and being comfortable going into the wilderness. It can be fairly handily done at 75 magic, uh, which I think is still a good thing to have on your mind in the mid game because it's such a very strong cape. And compared to other gear of this caliber, it's pretty amazing that it is essentially free. For example, compared to the Ancestral Robe top and bottom, those are going to cost you 50 or 60 mil each which is usually out of reach for mid-game players. So uh, next up here is the Fighter Torso. This is kind of one of those situations where it's a uh, do as I say, not as I do, or whatever the expression is. For some reason, I've never gotten a Fighter Torso, but that is out of pure laziness. The Fighter Torso is definitely worth getting. The Fighter Torso is honestly so strong, you can obtain it at 40 defense, and you get it from Barbarian Assault. Of course, this requires a bit of coordination and understanding of the Barbarian Assault minigame, but it is essentially as good as a Bando's Chestplate, while once again being free compared to the Bando's Chestplate, which costs you 16 mil. So unless you can make like 10 mil an hour, getting the torso is definitely worth it. And I think I'm probably going to get it for the first time on my Hardcore Ironman. It's got to be done. Now the final thing I wanted to touch on today are item imbues. While most items in the game can be bought directly from the Grand Exchange, imbuing them does require you to do it on your own. Imbuing an item is very strong because in a lot of cases it will just simply double the bonuses on the item which is huge. For example, you have items like the Archer Ring, the Berserker Ring, the Seer's Ring, the Slayer Helm. All of these are very powerful and definitely something worth working towards. Now, imbues have historically been done at the Nightmare Zone, uh, but you can now actually do it at Soul Wars, if that's something you're interested in doing. So realistically, as a mid-game goal, trying to get an imbued Archer Ring, Berserker Ring, and Slayer Helmet are probably the main things you want to work towards. And so anyway, guys, that is it. Those are 15 mid-game goals I'd recommend to players who have started an account somewhere recently. Uh, most of these are goals that don't require too much money to complete, and are things I think pretty much anyone can work towards. There are obviously tons of other things you could put on this list, but those are my 15 favorite. Thanks for watching, guys, as always, and I will see you next time. Now, before I go here, I want to give a massive thank you to all of my members over on YouTube. Thanks so much to Sejuani's Flail, The Hybrid, Guy Fox, Timothy Chen, Ocelot, and Kush Patel for all being subscribed at the Dragon Tier. You guys, it honestly means so much. You guys are willing to support me that much. Thank you. Also, a giant thank you to Base Titch, Mexos, NDM001, and YoYoSub89 for being subscribed at the Runite Tier. As always, if you guys are looking for another way to support the channel, becoming a YouTube member is an awesome way to do so. Mainly, you'll be immortalized in all of my future videos, but you also get a custom role in my Discord server, as well as access to my video release schedule. Thanks again, guys, and I'll see you next time.